Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller, host of Eyes on the Sky. For those of you that don't know me, I do videos that help people find things up in the night sky with small telescopes and binoculars. And uh, one of the questions I often get is, what do you think of this telescope? Should I buy it? Well, with the holidays approaching, uh, as I'm making this, I thought I'd offer a couple of recommendations you should strongly consider. I'm going to share a few secrets about good and bad telescopes and a couple that I recommend. Now, knowing nothing about your financial situation, your local light pollution, or your ability to move a telescope to darker skies. So let's start with a few badly kept secrets. One is that most telescopes today are made in China. It's not really news to most people. Uh, what most don't know is that most of the telescopes are made in just a few factories. So while you may see two or three or four different brands of a similar telescope, with slightly different features, they all probably originated out of the same location in China. So the brand itself very often doesn't matter. And I'm not going to talk much about brands, but rather types of telescopes to strongly consider buying. What that also means is that today, the main optical element of most telescopes is pretty good. Whether that's the lens in a refractor or the mirror in a reflector, the odds are that they are above average quality. Uh, for most astronomical telescopes that you would find out there from reputable dealers. Uh, but the marketers of telescopes know that you are looking to buy a telescope that's under a very specific price point. So what's happened is that almost all of the other important elements of a telescope, at least in the very inexpensive models, um, for example, the stability of the tripod, the quality of the eyepieces, the finder scope, the smoothness of the motions to aim the telescope, they're all compromised on telescopes below a certain level in order to meet the price they know you want to pay. And that's bad for you or the person getting the telescope. So here's another secret. Those decent optical tubes, that is to say just the optical tube with that above average main optical element, are on some very poor shaky mounts with some really underperforming accessories like two element eyepieces and stop down Barlow lenses. Because how can you aim a telescope with a finder scope through which you can't see anything? How can you use higher magnification on planets if the aluminum legs are so thin the telescope wobbles at the slightest breeze? And how do you aim it at Jupiter or Saturn when the motions are jerky and not smooth? That's a recipe for frustration and believe me I've been there I've owned telescopes like this. That means a lot of otherwise decent telescope tubes will never get used more than a few times because people will think they're hard to use. And for those compromised telescope systems that are inexpensive, they will be right. So unless you want to spend a lot of time fixing a wobbly, hard to aim telescope with cheap eyepieces and finder scopes, you'll need to upgrade anyway. Here are a few solid telescope choices you can have confidence in from the very beginning. Now, a large number of amateur astronomers when asked, what telescope should I buy, suggest an eight inch or 200 millimeter diameter aperture F6 Dobsonian reflector. And that's not a bad recommendation for most people uh, who are fairly uh, well-to-do as far as their health and can move the telescope easily and have some pretty decent means in terms of financial situation. But I'm gonna recommend a one size smaller and suggest the six inch F8 reflector instead, and here's why. One, it's a little lighter and therefore easier to move around by most anyone. Two, a reflector must have what's called collimation, and it must be good collimation in order to provide a good image at the eyepiece. And that's the um, aiming of the mirrors so that they are in alignment with each other. An F8 focal ratio of that six inch telescope is much more forgiving of a slight miscollimation than an F6 is. And that eight inch F6 um, being more difficult to collimate is gonna be uh, not as good for the uninitiated user. So the smaller mirror is balanced out by being able to achieve better images at the eyepiece with a more forgiving focal ratio. Third, the six inch F8 has a 1200 millimeter focal length. If it comes with a nine millimeter or 10 millimeter eyepiece, you'll have adequately decent views of the moon and planets, not to mention deep sky objects in either that eyepiece or a longer focal length one. 
Now, do these telescopes run above $300 or so? Yes, they do, but that's an investment they can easily last for 10 years or more with a little care. So that's $30 a year. That's a pretty inexpensive hobby. And it's well worth that money. And finally, an F8 system will provide good views, even with very inexpensive eyepieces. If you need to go a little smaller or less expensive, consider a 4.5 inch or 114 millimeter F8 Dobsonian reflector. You may need to set the base on a small crate to get it high enough up for easier viewing, but with a 900 millimeter focal length and a 10 millimeter eyepiece, you'll be able to see the rings of Saturn and the Andromeda Galaxy 2 in a longer focal length eyepiece. Price it around $250 or so from several retailers. It's a solid option that won't wobble, and it's also forgiving on collimation, and has enough aperture that many younger eyes will even see color in the Orion Nebula as well. And lastly, if those two options are still out of your price range, or if you're looking for someone who's a little uh, younger, Consider the little 76 millimeter tabletop Dobsonian reflectors. Now, I've reviewed these here on YouTube and on eyesonthesky.com. I prefer the Orion Fun Scope because it comes with a red dot finder and two inexpensive eyepieces, but those eyepieces aren't the cheapest possible option another brand uses either. So they're actually useful eyepieces. There's two things that you won't get with this telescope, though. You're not going to get a good table to put it on, so make sure you have one, or make my super simple 2x4 tripod if you're handy with some wood cutting tools and things. And the other thing you won't get is enough focal length to see the planets well. So you will need to buy a decent 3x Barlow lens, either immediately or in the future, to get up to about 90 times magnification to see the planets well. But don't think that this telescope isn't capable, because I've seen the Crab Nebula and two galaxies in Ursa Major, M81 and M82 with it. And so it's a great gift for kids interested in astronomy because it's easy for small hands to pick up and move. And you'll see a lot of the optical aberration called coma in this telescope, but that doesn't affect the middle half to two thirds of the view, which is where most people are going to look anyway. Now you'll notice that I haven't included any small refractors, that's because most are too small to see a lot and many of the ones that are larger are on mounts that are too small or too expensive, so the shakiness will make it impossible for you to see much. And notice I didn't mention any computerized telescopes, I can't tell you how many people I have tried to help with those telescopes because they seem like a great idea, they'll point themselves for you! Except what's often misunderstood is that if you can't align that telescope initially, you will be able to point at the moon or Saturn with your finger in the sky, but you'll never be able to aim your telescope at it. So please avoid these telescopes as a first one. I just don't think that they're a good option for your first one. I do have some other telescopes I don't mind recommending listed on my website, and I'll put them in the title section here on YouTube. So keep in mind, anything under about $250 or $300 is probably going to have some pretty significant compromises built into it. So either bite the bullet and spend a little extra, go with the small, stable, easy to use telescope, and learn more about what really might work for you in the future. Oh, and if you already have a small telescope, here's a couple eyepiece recommendations. Consider the Expanse 9mm or 6mm eyepieces from Orion Telescopes. They've got a 66 degrees apparent field of view, making higher magnification much more comfortable. Or if you have a stable enough telescope, like a Dobsonian, consider splurging a bit and getting an Explore Scientific 82 degrees uh, apparent field of view eyepiece, such as the 4.7 millimeter, the 6.7 millimeter, or the 8.8 millimeter eyepiece. I have the 4.7 and the 8.8, and I really like them. So I hope that'll help you with your holiday buying options this year. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.